morning and praise the Lord. Many people thought Fanny Crosby in 1873 found inspiration for the song through the passage of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Because she wrote the hymn on a whim. Though without any spiritual background, it might be difficult to write down a text of an inspiring hymn as blessed assurance in a very short time like she did. Fanny herself has already declared inspiration from the Almighty God as the source of all her hymns. The hymn was born on one blessed day in 1873 when Fanny paid her friend, Mrs. Phoebe, a visit to her house. During the visit, Phoebe played a new tune she had composed for Crosby's listening. Thereafter, she asked Fanny Crosby what her thoughts were on the tune she had just played. In reply, Crosby said, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. She then continued with her with other words of the hymn, and Mrs. Knapp or wrote the words shown um, to fit into the tune as we celebrate it today. The whole text of the hymn's focal point is heaven. A perfect place where perfect submission and perfect delight will come to pass. Blessed assurance as a hymn has stood the test of time. Up to date, it is one of the most famous hymns loved and sung on occasions and in churches. Besides the hymn, the hymn keeps enriching various congregations in the whole household of Christian faith and to us in the cathedral of all saints. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Hair of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Good morning again. And the name of the Lord be praised. My name is Edwin Kiteka, and I love the Lord and my, as my personal savior. By the grace of God, I sing in, this, in, in, in the cathedral and serve in the ministry of the choir. It is yet another day. We continue to reflect on the third portion of this week's uh, topic on baptism. But first, let us pray. Almighty Father and God of our Son, uh, God of our Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for the blessing of your word. We thank you for the opportunity to share your word. We thank you for this morning devotion and the many other devotions that you continue to bring to us through your people. We thank you for the gift of salvation and gift of baptism as we continue to reflect on what really we believe in as divine revelation, Lord, reflect your word to us and reveal your greater truth on baptism to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to this morning devotion. To understand what we really believe in and under the topic of baptism, uh, we looked at the significance of baptism on Monday. On Tuesday, we looked at baptism as a covenant and the sacrament. Uh, today, we reflect on baptism under the Trinity and really the call to Christian living. We read the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 13 to 17, uh, through um, the death of and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we get to be baptized. And we saw 
Jesus himself being baptized by John. During the baptism, in verse uh, 16, as John, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and li alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son and whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We are going to reflect today on baptism um, under the topic Trinity and Christian living. But first, let's draw to our attention the definitions of baptism according to the Bible. This is what we went through on Monday and Tuesday, and we looked at baptism being a ceremony and a symbolic ceremony where we are totally immersed in water and hands are laid on us and we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that we become begotten of God when the Spirit of God dwells in us. The other one is um, a ceremony or an outward acknowledgement of our past sin and the desire to change and be cleansed from past guilt. And we become disciples of Christ and members of the Church of God. Uh, baptism is part of our theology, a Christian theology described in the New Testament. And on Monday, we looked at significance. Tuesday, we looked at the covenant and sacrament. Then today, we look at the Trinity. The baptism of Jesus is one of the few instances in the Bible where all three persons of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, who is Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit are present simultaneously. Last week, we looked at Trinity and the doctrine of Trinity, of three persons of our God. As Jesus emerged from the water, the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. And a voice from heaven representing God the Father declared that this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This Trinity manifestation affirms the divine nature of Jesus and highlights the unity and the interrelationship as it was uh, brought to us last week of the three persons of the Godhead. The three topics encompass some of the central aspects of baptism of Jesus. It focuses, as we've said, of the role of John the Baptist, Baptist and the Trinity nature of that event. Baptism is intimately connected to the doctrine of the Trinity of Christian faith. The Trinity is the belief that there is one God who exists in three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, who is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Baptism is administered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, reflecting this Trinity understanding. The mention of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in the formula of baptism reflects the belief that all three persons of the Trinity are involved in the sacrament. It affirms that God in his true triune nature is active and present in the act of baptism. The Father is the creator and sustainer of all things. In baptism, the Father's love and grace are symbolized, representing the initiation into the family of God. The Son, Jesus Christ, is one through whom salvation is accomplished. When we receive Jesus, when we receive salvation, we declare that Christ has come into our hearts and we believe in him. In baptism, believers are united with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection, symbolically sharing in the redemptive work of Christ. It represents the believer's identification 
with Christ's sacrifice and their participation in the new life offered through him. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, often to referred to as the spirit of truth, the comforter. And in baptism, the Holy Spirit is believed to be present, working to transform and sanctify us. The Holy Spirit empowers us and guides us in the Christian walk and enables us to live according to God's will. The Trinity formula used in baptism reflect, reflects the foundational belief or belief in the Christian faith and God is a relational being existing as three persons in perfect unity. Baptism symbolizes the believer's initiation into the divine relationship and participation in the new life in the triune God. It is important that while we are looking at the triune formula commonly used in uh, baptism, there are variations and we need to understand what God really tells us about himself, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as we receive the sacrament of baptism. Baptism is not a one-time event, brethren. It is a lifelong commitment in our living as Christians. We, the believers, are called to embrace a new way of life, and we live according to the teachings and example of Jesus Christ. It is to ask ourselves, what do we fall short of as believers? And as we emulate Jesus Christ, what do we fall short of and continue to repent? I will draw to us some Christian living through baptism and how we understand what we need to do. The number one is to repent and be transformed. Baptism signified at, signifies a turning away from sin and a commitment to live a life that is pleasing to God. It is a call to repentance, acknowledging one needs one's sins and that we all need forgiveness and desiring the transformation of our hearts and mind. Baptism symbolizes the believer's desire or our desire to leave behind our old ways of life and embrace the new way of living in accordance to God's will. Number two, we need to follow Christ's example. Baptism calls us to follow the example of Jesus Christ who lived a life of love, humility, and service, brethren. Do we serve each other? Do we love each other? And do we interact with each other with humility? It invites us to imitate love, God with all our hearts, our souls, and our minds, and to love our neighbors as ourselves, as recorded in Matthew chapter 22. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. We need to participate in the Christian community, number three. And baptism also entails us as a commitment and active participation in the Christian community. Believers, we are all called to join and contribute to the congregation that God gives us. Where we come to worship together, we learn together, we serve together in humility, and grow together as Christians. Baptism signifies the connection of the large body of Christ and the commitment to support and encourage each other. We need to share the good news of our salvation. And baptism calls us as believers to share our faith with others where we witness the gospel of Christ in our offices, in our transport modes, whether in a plane or in, by road transport. We need to keep on confessing our God in the marketplace. 
We are called upon to proclaim the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ and really to demonstrate God's love and grace through our words and the most important, our actions. Baptism is a visible testimony of one's faith and can serve as a catalyst to evangelism and sharing the hope that we find in Christ. The holy living and spiritual growth is given to us as number five point, that commitment to a life of holiness and ongoing spiritual growth, ongoing brethren, invokes seeking God's guidance, we need to study the scriptures. We engage in prayer, and we need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our life. By this, we shall overcome the economic challenges, the social challenges, the political challenges that we have in our present country. Baptism is a reminder that we as believers, we need to continually transform and depend really on God. And that is why we said it is not a one-time event. Ultimately, we need to call Christian living uh, through baptism as a lifelong journey of faith. We need to experience, demonstrate love, obedience to God's word, service to one another, and growth in relationship with our God and others. It is in response to God's love, grace, and commitment that we align our purposes and our values. The hymn writer finished by saying, perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. Let us pray. Father, we rededicate ourselves to live in you and live a life for your glory. We remember the day when we were baptized and washed off all our sins. Lord, it is in your grace that we are counted worth to be called your children. Help us to keep your commandments. Renew our strength this day that we may be strong in faith and increased in, increased in zeal. Preserve us for the glorious day of your coming. We believe your word which says he will begun a good work in us, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Lead us into greater spiritual depths, even in the coming days. May our perfect submission be at rest that we in you shall be happy and blessed. As we watch and wait from above, may we be filled with your goodness and lost in your love. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen.